Good afternoon. Here's what's making news this Monday, the 29th of January. Authorities talking tough on neo-Nazis. How soon could we see them unmasked? The Treasurer talks down rumours of a negative gearing overhaul in damage control after Stage 3 tax cut changes. The world on edge as the US plots revenge for its first soldier casualties since the start of the Israel-Hamas conflict. New video of the ugly A-League brawl that had police scrambling, the attackers still at large. And Yannick Sinner celebrates after claiming his first Australian Open Grand Slam title. What he's had to say this afternoon. This is 10 News First Afternoon with Narelda Jacobs. Hi, and great to have your company at 3.30. Assurances this afternoon that there'll be no changes to negative gearing laws. Treasurer Jim Chalmers quashing the reports as the federal government tries to rebuild trust after changes to stage three tax cuts. It comes after the PM was loudly booed at the Australian Open last night. The Prime Minister's shrugging off the jeers as nothing but tradition when the MC acknowledged Anthony Albanese was in the crowd during last night's Australian Open trophy presentation, the crowd erupted into boos. Anthony Albanese, the Deputy Victorian Premier. The federal government's putting it down to a well-worn Australian sporting tradition for PMs to cop, denying it's a reflection of public sentiment towards Mr Albanese or has anything to do with the broken promise on Stage 3 tax cuts. As the Treasurer starts the week defending the rejig tax package for July 1 targeted at Middle Australia, he says there's no plan to change other policies like negative gearing. The focus on the tax change that we are proposing, not on the tax change that we're not. So we can take your word on negative gearing? Well, we've made it really clear, you know, that that's not something that we have considered or are considering. This time last week, though, the federal government was saying the same thing about stage three tax cuts. Chloe Boris there. With each hour that passes, more MPs from the federal and New South Wales parliaments are unleashing on the group of balaclava-clad neo-Nazis who attempted to disrupt events over the long weekend. Authorities have vowed to name and shame all 66 individuals who took part in these three separate gatherings in Sydney's north. At least 24 of them were from Victoria, six from South Australia and five from Queensland. One self-proclaimed racist posted on social media today, sharing his group's bus ride back to Victoria while labelling the weekend demonstrations a, quote, massive propaganda triumph. Look, the truth is that they may well be recruiting, but the reality is that the police's swift action ensured that they were not able to achieve their goal, and that was to spread their toxicity. These groups hide behind their anonymity. Uh, they, they know that there would be significant consequences for them. Certainly unmasking them would uh, certainly discourage them from, uh, from protesting in this way. The same man from the group also bragged about wasting millions of dollars worth of taxpayers' money and claims his associates will not pay any of the fines handed out. You do have to pay your fines and if you don't pay your fines then it's subject to the criminal justice system. So I'm not going to prejudge that process but it's not optional. It doesn't matter where you live. There's no place for these kinds of grubs in a civilised society. And I would expect uh, the full letter of the law to be enforced. The book thrown at these neo-Nazis uh, and, if necessary, uh, all action taken to recover these fines. At least 61 infringement notices have been handed out for offensive behaviour. And Sydney viewers can see more of that story in your local news at 5pm. A woman has given a tearful description of an alleged encounter with rugby player Kirtley Beale in a toilet cubicle at a Bondi bar in late 2022. The complainant says Beale barged in on her in an unlocked toilet cubicle, exposed himself, then forced her to perform an oral act. She's told a jury it happened quickly and she told Beale she did not want to partake in the act. Beale has pleaded not guilty to all charges, which include accusations he also groped the woman on the backside earlier that night. He was the first of four men convicted over South Australia's notorious Snowtown murders. And this afternoon, we're learning Mark Ray Hayden could be freed from jail within months. Hayden was convicted for covering up seven of the 11 killings in which bodies were hidden in barrels inside a disused bank vault. One of the victims was his own wife. The state government is seeking advice on using new laws to keep him locked up when his 25-year sentence ends in May. 
A man and a woman are fronting court today charged with stabbing a supermarket manager in Sydney's West. Police claim the pair was suspected of shoplifting when the attack occurred, with another staff member also injured. Our reporter Samara Gardner is outside court. A 31-year-old man and a 21-year-old woman are due to face court today, charged after a 47-year-old supermarket manager was allegedly stabbed yesterday afternoon. That assault occurred when the store manager uh, allegedly attempted to stop the pair who he suspected uh, had been shoplifting. Now, he was stabbed in the side and in the chest. Police were on the scene within minutes. Uh, another shop worker was also allegedly punched in the face. 31-year-old Daniel Jaderi and 21-year-old Brittany Burden were both arrested at the scene. They've been, since been charged and are due to face court today. Meanwhile, the shop worker has undergone surgery. His injuries were serious, but he's now in a stable condition. Samara Garner there. The A-League says it will work with police to crack down on fan violence following a clash between Melbourne Victory and Sydney FC. New video posted on Melbourne Victory's Ultra Supporters Instagram page shows Sydney fans being chased through the streets of Melbourne and assaulted by Victory supporters. The fight broke out around 10.30 Friday night near Amy Park. Police responded, but two security guards were assaulted while trying to break things up both sustaining minor injuries. So far, no charges have been laid and police are urging witnesses to come forward. Tens of thousands of children suspected of being at risk of abuse have not been seen in person by New South Wales authorities. According to News Corp, just over 27,000 of more than 113,000 at-risk young people were seen by the Department of Communities and Justice between October 2022 and September last year. That means some 76% have not been visited by a caseworker. It's reported many are leaving the industry fed up with having to work long hours with no extra pay. Drivers are being urged to slow down and take care. As new figures today confirm, we've had the deadliest six-month period on our roads in more than 13 years. 677 people lost their lives in the second half of 2023, making it the largest half-yearly road toll since 2010. The data also shows more than 1,200 people died on Australian roads last year, an increase of over 7% on the year before. The Australian Automobile Association says it's been unable to find exactly what's behind the trend, but it's criticised the lack of a credible plan to reduce incidents. There are welfare concerns for thousands of livestock stranded aboard an export ship off the West Australian coast. The vessel departed from Fremantle last month for the Middle East, but was ordered back by the federal government due to security concerns in the Red Sea. The cattle and sheep are now in limbo. Due to Australian biosecurity laws, they are not allowed to disembark. It's understood the Department of Agriculture is reviewing the matter. And for the latest on this story, Perth viewers can see more of it in your local news at 5pm. A drop in the cost of childcare is expected to be short-lived and won't fix the problems with the system, according to the ACCC. Its final report in a year-long inquiry finds that current regulatory settings are failing to deliver on key policy objectives. It also reveals the subsidies which took effect last July reduced childcare centre costs by an average 11%. Historical trends, though, suggest subsidies are usually absorbed by fee increases. That's been the pattern. Every time the government puts more money into early childhood education and care by increasing the childcare subsidy, that money gets eaten up in an increase in fees. The ACCC recommends government intervention, including a market stewardship role, supply-side subsidies and re-evaluating the activity test. The government plans to assess the recommendations in coming months. Coming up, what will a US response look like after the deaths of three of its troops in drone strikes in Jordan? Plus, gunfire rips through a place of worship while authorities believe it's a terror attack. Also ahead, Queen Camilla visits King Charles in hospital with reports he won't get back to full duties for weeks. And confetti, costumes and colour as the Venice Carnival kicks off with a bang.
It's a tense wait this afternoon with US President Joe Biden vowing to respond after three of his soldiers were killed and more than 30 wounded in a drone strike in Jordan. The White House is blaming radical Iran-backed militant groups for the attack, which hit the living quarters of a base called Tower 22 near the Jordan-Syria border. So far, it's unclear exactly which group is responsible, but officials say the strike was launched from within Syria. Last there have now been nearly 160 attacks on U.S. and coalition forces in Iraq and Syria. But this is the first which has killed U.S. soldiers since the war in Gaza broke out. At least 34 troops are being evaluated for possible traumatic brain injuries. Meanwhile, fresh warnings that Gaza faces inevitable famine as nine countries, including Australia, pause funding for the UN's Agency for Palestinian Affairs. Special rapporteur on the right to food, Michael Fakhri, says more than two million Palestinians are now facing imminent starvation. The UN is labelling the decision to halt funding as collective punishment for those trapped. The pause has been triggered by claims from Israel that staff from the UN Relief and Works Agency took part in the October 7 Hamas incursion. So far, nine workers have been fired. One has been killed, while the status of two others is unknown. Meanwhile, thousands of Palestinians continue to flee Han Yunus in southern Gaza as Israeli troops lay siege to the city. We received a leaflet from the Israeli army to evacuate. My son and I, who was innocent, were allowed out. But then they took my son. He has been arrested until now. I am going back and forth every two hours to check on him. My son did nothing. Why did they arrest him? With the official Palestinian death toll now at more than 26,000, the UN says around two-thirds of Gaza's population is being crammed into shelters and tent camps in and around Rafah near the Egyptian border. In developing news this afternoon, authorities in Turkey have detained two members of Islamic State, allegedly linked to a shocking attack on Sunday mass worshippers in Istanbul. Around 40 people were inside the Santa Maria Roman Catholic Church when a 52-year-old man was gunned down and died at the scene. The gunman is said to have calmly walked away and were detained after a major police search around 30 properties. This dash cam vision gives you an idea of the dangers police officers face when dealing with drivers on the side of a motorway. Another vehicle slams into the white SUV out of nowhere. Much of the left side is torn off, launching the officer several metres away. Incredibly, he only suffered minor injuries and even called for backup to help with those in two cars. Queen Camilla has visited King Charles in hospital as he continues his recovery from a prostate procedure. The Queen was spotted arriving in a black Audi at the London Clinic private hospital where Charles has been staying since being admitted on Friday. As the King recuperates, it's expected he won't undertake any royal duties for up to a month but will continue to attend to government matters once discharged. The King's daughter-in-law, the Princess of Wales, is at the same hospital still recovering from abdominal surgery. Leonardo's world-famous Mona Lisa masterpiece has been targeted by protesters in France. In videos shared online, two female activists can be seen throwing soup at the painting as they demand healthy and sustainable food for all. The 16th century painting is kept behind protective glass in the Louvre, so it wasn't damaged. But that didn't stop police arresting the pair. The group responsible wants to see food provided as part of the country's social security system, as well as a food card worth hundreds of dollars. Taylor Swift has all but disappeared from social media platform X. That's because the tech giant, formerly known as Twitter, has placed a temporary ban on searches for the singer in the wake of deep fake scandal, which saw explicit AI-generated images of the pop star distributed around the platform. Fans have responded swiftly, sharing tasteful images of Tay-Tay, along with the hashtag Protect Taylor Swift, which went viral. While the White House press secretary has called the situation alarming. Thousands of people have descended on Venice to mark the start of the city's annual carnival. Dozens of decorated boats and crews in elaborate costumes rode along the Grand Canal, led by the carnival's legendary seven-metre-long boat shaped like a giant rat. 
The canal then erupted in a colourful cloud of confetti and balloons to officially kick off the celebrations. There is so much joy around. People want to have fun and most of all to respect the city. For the next two weeks, Venice becomes one big spectacular party with a huge program of performances and events spread across the city. Up next, a check of the weather with 10 News First meteorologist Josh Holt. Plus, in sport, the Aussies wake to the day after licking their wounds following the West Indies' historic Test match victory. Yannick Sinner celebrates after claiming his first Australian Open Grand Slam title in a match for the ages. And here's what's coming up in your local 10 News First Bulletin at 5. Making news in Queensland, a trial starts in Brisbane for a Gold Coast mother accused of murdering her own son, a troubled young man. Three American Marines killed in a drone strike in Jordan. President Biden vows we shall respond. The two Gold Coast business women taking on Tom Tate in March. And we have the inside scoop. The West Indies reveal what motivated them to beat Australia for the first time since 1997. Let's get some sport now and the celebrations continue this afternoon for the new Australian Open men's champion Yannick Sinner. The 22-year-old defeated Daniil Medvedev at Rod Laver Arena last night, becoming the youngest ever Italian player to win a Grand Slam. Sam Mills has more. Well, it's party time for Yannick Sinner with the Italian crown, the new king of Melbourne Park after a five-set thrilling win over Daniil Medvedev. Novak Djokovic in 2008, potentially marking the dawn of a new era in men's tennis. His win set off huge celebrations in Melbourne's Italian community from Garden Square to Ligon Street in Carlton. But it was Sinner's team that enjoyed the moment the most. Yeah, there were obviously a lot of, so many emotions in my head, um, the hard work and the sacrifices I've done throughout my my career and um, sharing this moment with, with my team was maybe the best feeling. It was a record-breaking Australian Open with more than one million fans flooding through the gates and plans are already in full swing for 2025. Australian cricketers are still coming to terms with their historic loss against West Indies. Josh McLean has more. What a Gabba test match it was. The first time since all the way back in 1997 since a travelling West Indian side has left here with a win. This morning, the Aussie players, well, they still looked rather disappointed, certainly shell-shocked at what happened yesterday. Some bleary-eyed players leaving to go back to their individual states as they prepare for the upcoming New Zealand Test Series. Not all of the Aussie players will feature in the upcoming white ball stuff. But yesterday, well, the Frank Worrell Trophy, that does stay with Australia, but really it was the West Indies who will leave in Brisbane here with their heads held the highest. Shamar Joseph, his seven wickets are being talked about all around the world and we even have to go all the way back to 1981-82 for the last time that the West Indies drew a series down under. So Australia, they've got some work to do as they head to New Zealand for their next test assignment and some areas that need fixing. Thanks for that, Josh. The Socceroos have qualified for the Asian Cup quarterfinals after a 4-0 win over Indonesia. Scott McKinnon has all the highlights from Doha. Well, it was a massive win for the Socceroos in the end. 4-0 over Indonesia, but it was not easy at all. It was feisty, it was fiery. There were yellow cards left, right and centre. But in the end, the Aussies were just way too clinical, booking their spot in the Asian Cup quarterfinals. Now, Martin Boyle scored his second goal in as many games. Uh, not that he knew too much about it when it came flying off his noggin. Ford rolling and headed into the back step. These balls are, are really are hard. Um... Yeah, and I just got a bit dazed and, you know, as he's came running over and said I scored. Well, Craig Goodwin proved the super sub. He came on, scored a goal with a great reaction and celebration and then provided the assist for Harry Sutar as well. Now, he's back from a few knocks on his knee and he wants to be there right from the start in the next game. That is a big game, the quarterfinals at the Asian Cup. I always want to start games. That's that's what every every player is striving for. You never sit there and say, I want to I want to be on the bench um, and come on. But you know, if that's the role that I have to do for now, because Geordie's come in and he's done really well. Um, you know, what whatever Arnie Arnie does and whatever uh, role he puts on me, that's what I'll um, do to the best of my abilities. 
Now, it wasn't convincing at times for the Socceroos, but that finish, Graham Arnold says, will give them a whole lot of confidence because they will face either Saudi Arabia or South Korea in the quarterfinals. That game getting played on Tuesday night. But at the moment, we are celebrating a win for the Socceroos. Scott McKinnon in Doha there. The Kansas City Chiefs are into the Super Bowl after they beat the Baltimore Ravens 17-10. to Tight end Travis Kelsey played a pivotal role in the win, which saw his girlfriend Taylor Swift head onto the field to offer some enthusiastic congratulations. The Chiefs will now play either the San Francisco 49ers or the Detroit Lions in the Super Bowl in Las Vegas on the 11th of Feb. It's a safe bet Taylor will be there to cheer on her man before she heads down here to kick off her Australian tour the following weekend. Time now for a check of the weather around the country with 10 News First meteorologist Josh Holt. Good afternoon, NJ. Well, we certainly have seen plenty of weather in recent times across the nation. We've had everything from tropical cyclones to severe thunderstorms, heavy rain and even heat waves. But let's dive into the latest weather details across Australia on this Monday afternoon. And, of course, all eyes are on the north here on the satellite. We've got uh, that heavy rain which has been persisting over the northern part of the country. And, as a result, very heavy rain across parts of Queens, northern Queensland and the northern part of the Territory. Let's just see if we can bring up the uh, satellite image. Oh, there it is on screen right now. You can see that cloud extending across inland parts of Queensland. That's what I want to show you right now. And as you can see here, we've got some yellow shaded areas. What they are, severe thunderstorm warnings across the southern inland for heavy rainfall at the moment. In fact, some areas there overnight saw around about 70 millimetres in just a one hour period. So very heavy rain across Queensland. The severe weather warning you can see in the top left hand of your screen, that's for ex-tropical cyclone Kiralee continuing to move west. On the synoptic pattern tomorrow, not much change. We've got a region of high pressure across the southern part of the country. Troughs of low pressure through inland parts of Queensland. That'll spark up, as you can see here on the rain. More showers and thunderstorms tomorrow, some of which will be severe across areas of Queensland. Let's now take a look at the national uh, forecast as we get through tomorrow, and we are expecting rain and storms across areas of Queensland. We're looking at fine skies across Melbourne and Adelaide. It will be partly cloudy for those two cities. Have a look at Perth, though. Temperatures up into the high 30s with a hot and sunny day and we'll have all the local weather details so NJ coming up in the local bulletins at 5pm.